good morning. I just want you to see what a few of the class members had to say about last week's lesson and uh, be encouraged by the number of people that watched the video. Uh, also want to remind you we'd like to have your comments and we'd like to have your pictures so please get those ready. So well, let's take a look at last week. Let's see what they said. 91 people actually watched the video and from Frank and Peggy uh, we have this seer. We have uh, really enjoyed the rejuvenating words, love the uh, verses and they're important for us and lay it out so that we can take the road. Uh, Linda Brady said we're here but she's not in that car in the picture of the cartoon. Somebody sent me that cartoon of drive-in churches and drive-in baptism and Chris Owen says thanks Pastor Pete for sharing this morning love verses 9 through 13 for as believers that's what we stand on. Robert and Darlene Turner said we're here. Well today I challenged you to look at uh, Romans chapter 11 verses uh, 17 through 32 and to put in your comments about grace and mercy versus justice. And next week we're going to be looking at uh, sacrifice and it'll be based on Romans chapter 12 verses 1 through 18. That's Romans 12, 1 through 18. We're going to be looking at sacrifice. Tell me what you think about that lesson. Send me your clips, send me your comments and we'll get them on the air with uh, the special Fizz Sunday School lesson, uh, fun, interactive Sunday School. So let's take a look at the scripture verses for today. Romans 11 verses 17 through 32. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, being a wild olive, were grafted in among them and became partakers with them of the rich root of the olive tree. Do not be arrogant toward the branches, but if you are arrogant, remember that it is not you who supports the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. Quite right. But you, but they were broken off for their unbelief, but you stand by your faith. Do not be conceited, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Behold then the kindness and the severity of God to those who fell severity but to you God's kindness and if you continue in his kindness otherwise you will be cut off and they also if they do not continue in their unbelief will be grafted in for God is able to graft them in again for if you were cut off from what is by nature a wild olive tree and were grafted contrary to nature into the cultivated olive tree, how much more will these who are natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? For I do not want you, brethren, to be uninformed of this mystery so that you will not be wise in your own estimation that a partial hardening has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all of Israel will be saved just as it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion and he will remove the ungodliness from Jacob. This is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. From the standpoint of the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but from the standpoint of God's choice, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For just as you once were disobedient to God, but now have become, have shown, been shown mercy because of their disobedience, so these also now have been disobedient that because of the mercy shown to you they also may now be shown mercy for God has shut up all in disobedience 
so that he may show mercy to all. When I was a young man in Florida, I became aware of orange trees. <laughs> you might think that's funny, but uh, it really wasn't until I moved to Florida from uh, north uh, that I really started to become aware of the blessings of citrus trees in Florida. And it wasn't very long before I started to learn about the grafting of citrus trees. And that certainly is somewhat similar to this illustration of the olive tree. So let me tell you about it. You see, in Florida, they took sour oranges, oranges that weren't very good, and found that they had really strong rootstock. Uh, the, the rootstock of a sour orange was much more stable in cold weather. Uh, it was much more stable in diseases and bugs. And so they began to graft in tangerines, navel oranges, and all types of good fruit into the sour rootstock of an orange tree. And before long, you had a tree that could stand the temperatures and stand the bugs and the diseases uh, that they would not have been able to stand on their own. I learned it the hard way because uh, one year I had a mercot tree. A mercot tree is a tree that has been grafted and it has a fruit that's between a tangerine and an orange. It peels a little harder than a tangerine uh, but it's much sweeter like a tangerine. Well, we had a freeze coming and I thought I would try to protect my tree, but I wasn't able to because the temperatures went down to 20 degrees. And, and in a short time, it was quite obvious that all of the branches were dead and all of those blossoms and all of those wonderful mercots that I was looking forward to were gone too. Uh, and so I, uh, I was getting ready to dig up the orange tree, but I noticed in a short time that there were some new sprouts coming up from the base of the tree. I waited and I waited and the branches grew and grew until after a little while, a year or two, uh, there was new blossoms on the tree and I was so excited because I was going to have some mercots. But guess what? What I got was sour oranges because you see the good branches had been frozen, but the solid, strong mercot tree, which was based on a sour orange tree, had now become just a sour orange tree. The grafting in had worked, but not after the freeze. So I learned about grafting. So let's take a look at today's story and let's think about the fact that God has used the olive tree. And the first thing that he does is he has some broken branches. Well, the olive tree represents God. And, and he's strong, just like the sour rootstock of my orange tree. And he has natural branches, the nation of Israel. But they're become unbelieving and they're broken off because they're unbelieving. And so he grafts in the Gentiles. Uh, they're grafted in not because God didn't like the Jews, not because he wanted them to be broken off, but because of their unbelief. And he grafted in the Gentile branches uh, because they were believing and they would be fruitful. Well, he tells us here, don't get conceited about that. Don't look down on the Jews because he made a promise to their fathers that there would always be a nation of Israel. And if they would become believing, they'd be grafted back in. Now that's really quite interesting when you think about it. So let's take a picture look at this. Let's first of all look at the different kinds of branches that God can have. Notice that there are four types of branches illustrated here on this simple sheet of paper. Uh, the first one is that we have believing Jews. Uh, some of the early fathers of the Jewish faith were very much believing Jews. And then we had the unbelieving Jews, the Jews of Jesus' day, uh, when they wouldn't believe that Jesus was really God in the flesh. And we also had unbelieving Gentiles. They had no use for either Judaism or for Christianity. But we also had some believing Gentiles. Some of those early followers of Christ the disciples, the apostles, they, they believed in Christ, 
Now, God uses the illustration here of the, the fact that the Jews who were unbelieving were broken off and that the believing Gentiles were grafted in. But he says, don't get too cocky about that. Don't get too arrogant about that because the Jews weren't broken off because he doesn't love them. They were broken off because they were unbelieving. And someday, he says, he's going to take a remnant of Jews and he's going to graft them back in. But he warns the Gentiles that they'd better remain believing because if they're not, they're not going to last on the tree either. So exactly who is going to be on the tree and who's not going to be on the tree? Let's look at this next drawing and see. So in this next drawing, we see clearly that there will be some believing Gentiles on the tree. And we know that some of the Jews believed even in Jesus' day. So we know there's going to be some Jews that will be in the tree. Uh, but there'll be a lot more Jews in the end times, it tells us. They'll be believing and be grafted in as well. And why shouldn't they be? God chose them a long time ago to bear forth the Savior, Jesus Christ. What a wonderful illustration of this grafting in of both Jew and Gentile. And that we shouldn't be arrogant just because we're grafted in. Recognize that the Jew too will be grafted in and it'll be a wonderful fellowship together. So let's take a look at this passage of scripture and let's take a look at it verse by verse. In verses one through five, God has not rejected his people. That's not at all what the scripture is saying. As a matter of fact, just the opposite. He's remembered his people. Even though some of the Jews may have felt like they were in a minority, even though they may have been felt like they were the only ones, Elijah felt that way. Elijah felt like he was the only one that was still alive, remember? He went and had a pity party in a cave because he thought he was the only one. But in verse 6, we find that we're saved by grace, by believing and not unbelieving. And so it's very important for us to understand the difference between grace and works. Grace, I love the acrostic, G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. Uh, let's just illustrate it with a silly illustration. Let's say I hand you $20 and I say, I want you to have this. And you say, well, that's grace. And I say, oh, but by the way, you have to go weed my 100-acre garden. <laughs> that's not grace. That's works. You're going to work for that $20. But suppose I give you $20 and I say, I want you to have this and I don't want you to pay me back. And there's no other strings and no other things attached to the requirement for you to receive the $20 except that you receive it. That's grace. That's mercy and grace. You didn't do anything to deserve it or to earn it. It was just given to you by my grace out of mercy for your need. And that's exactly the picture of God giving mercy and grace. And so it's a different thing than works, isn't it? In verse 7, it goes on and it says uh, that there were a Jewish minority who had believed in Jesus and accepted him. They were grafted in just like the Gentiles. Uh, but we also find that there was a vast majority of the Jews who had hardened their hearts. And, and here's a verse that I really want you to remember as we look at verses 8 through 10. Well, actually all the way through 11. They allow ritual to replace righteousness. Let me say it again for you. The Jews had allowed ritual to replace righteousness. Their ritual became more important to them than looking to see if the Messiah had really come. And it replaced righteousness in their lives. Their hearts had become hardened against Jesus. Salvation came to the Gentiles because they believed. The branches were broken off because they disbelieved. But it tells us that in the end times, not only now as some Jews come to believe, but in the end times many Jews will come to believe and they'll be grafted back in as they should be.
So continuing our exposition of Scripture, verse 17, the broken off branches are unbelieving Jews. The grafted in branches are the believing Gentiles. And verse 18 is a warning not for us Gentiles to be arrogant uh, because the Jews were broken off. It was because of their unbelief. And also, as we continue through the scriptures, we need to drop down to verses 22 and 23, where it says, Behold two things. The first thing that we're to behold is the kindness, the mercy, and the grace of God. But there's a second thing that very often isn't preached, and that is the severity and justice that God can bring when we come to an unbelief. So we need to be sure that we understand whether we're really grafted in. And so verses 18 through 21, we need to be sure that we don't believe that that's loss of salvation because branches are broken off. They never did believe. And the warning to the Gentiles is that they be sure that they are grafted in, that they are believing Gentiles. And then finally, we want to remember in verse 25 through 29 that God made an irrevocable promise to the Jew. And as a result of that, that any Jew that believes will be grafted back in. That's not a regaining salvation, that's gaining salvation through belief. So there's two definitions that I challenged you to think about. The first definition was the definition of grace. It's a divine love by God, unmerited favor, nothing we could do to earn it or deserve it, grace and mercy. But justice is upholding the law, and it's important for us to uphold his law. But when we break his law, we can find forgiveness through Jesus' death on the cross. And that's what salvation is all about. It's forgiveness for breaking the law. Forgiveness for the wages of sin or death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. I heard a wonderful story one time. Uh, it's a story about a man that uh, came to a stop sign and he slowed but he didn't stop. A policeman was hiding behind a billboard and he pulled out and pulled the man over. He said, I'm going to write you a ticket. And the man said, I want justice. I slowed down. I just didn't stop. And the cop said, no, you want mercy and grace. And he says, but I slowed down and there's no difference between slowing down and stopping. And the policeman said, well, if I can show you the difference between slowing down and stopping, will you take this ticket? And the man said, yes, I will. And the policeman said, well, I'm going to take out my nightstick and I'm going to start to beat you on the head and shoulders. You tell me if you want me to slow down or if you want me to stop. <laughs> well, obviously he would want him to stop. And he, the policeman went on and said, you see, justice is upholding the law. And the law said for you to stop. But mercy and grace would be the forgiveness and forgiving you breaking the law. And that's really what you want is mercy and grace for breaking the law. And that's my thought today on today's Sunday School lesson. I hope you're going to tell us some comments that you have about this lesson and about the future lesson when we look together at scriptures next week. God bless you and have a great day. Be sure to stay tuned for Mark's message. I know it's going to be a great one, so you, you watch for Mark's morning message. And don't forget tonight's drive-in service uh, behind the hardware store. And uh, remember that social distancing. God bless you.